how to pay yourself as a director of a limited company in 2023, 2024. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you what I believe is the most tax efficient way and the easiest way to pay yourself as a director of a limited company this year. This is the fourth year on the trot that I've made this video. So hopefully those of you that have been subscribed to the channel for a while now know what to expect. And those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. So firstly, this is not financial advice. I am not an accountant. However, feedback on previous videos has suggested that this information is better than most accountants give out. So make of that what you will. So I've got a few things to run through first before I can actually give you my recommended salary because if you're gonna trust some random guy off the internet, you at least wanna know how he came to the conclusion and got the figures that he presented. So up first, we're taking a quick look at income tax and all of this comes together when we get to the final salary. That's why I have to go through each of these bit by bit. So income tax, this is paid on your income and salary, it excludes dividends, dividends are taxed separately. The income tax rates for 2023, 2024 are as follows. You have your personal allowance. So this is your tax-free allowance. You can earn up to 12,570 pound. And I think this allowance has been frozen now until 2028. That also applies to the basic rate as well. And that is from 12,571 pound to 50,270 and you'll pay 20% tax on that income. Then above that, you've got the higher rate, which is from just above 50,000 to 125,000 and then the additional rate, which is 125,000 pound plus, which has decreased this year, it used to be 150,000 pound. And just a final point, for those of you that earn over 100,000 pound, keep in mind that for every two pound you earn over 100,000 pound, you will lose one pound of your personal allowance. So by the time you get to that additional rate, you'd have effectively been paying 60% tax on that earnings between 100,000 and 125,000 pound as you lose your personal allowance. So you end up paying the 20% basic rate much earlier. So that's just some background for income tax. We then have national insurance as this comes into the equation as well. And there are three types of national insurance that I want you to be aware of. The first is the lower earnings limit, also the LEL threshold. I like to call it the benefits threshold as this isn't the point at which you start paying national insurance, but it is the point at which you qualify for state pension. So providing you earn over those amounts, so £6,396 per year, you will qualify for your state pension token for that year. The next type of national insurance I want you to be aware of is the primary threshold. And this is when employees, so if you have a limited company, you will be an employee of your limited company. That is when you start paying national insurance. And the threshold for that has been increased last year to match the personal income tax allowance. So now your primary threshold, employees NI, is £12,570 as well, just like it is for your personal tax allowance. And then above that, you will pay 12% national insurance on anything from £12,570 up to £50,270. And then above that, it comes down to only 2% over that £50,000 threshold. Then finally, we have the secondary threshold, and I've got here, this is the business one. So this is when employers start paying national insurance. So your limited company starts to pay national insurance on its employees when they earn above these thresholds. So if you as a director, as an employee of your company or one of the people that you employ starts to earn over 9,100 pound per year, your business will start paying employers national insurance and that is paid at 13.8% above the secondary threshold. So for anything above 9,100 pound, your business will pay national insurance, and there is no reduction for this once you get past the 50,000 threshold either. Now, in previous years, that 9,100 threshold or whatever the secondary threshold would have been for that particular year, that would usually have been the threshold that I recommend people paid themselves as the most optimal tax efficient director salary. However, things have all changed this year. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video where I'm gonna talk you through the full optimal salary. And just a final point on national insurance, combined employees and employers national insurance can be as high as 25.8%. So that is why we pay ourselves the way I'm gonna to recommend to avoid having that 25.8% national insurance tax to pay. Uh, the next thing I want to cover briefly is corporation tax. So this is payable against net profits made by a limited company. It's not paid on turnover. It's only paid on profits. 
There are allowable business expenses that can be used to offset against profits, such as your salary, and this will reduce your corporation tax liability. So like I just said, your salary and employers and I are allowable business expenses. So keep these all in mind. This is all gonna to come together later on in the video. The corporation tax rates for 2023, 2024 are, for less than 50,000 pound profits, which is the small profits rate, it's only 19%, which is what it's been for the past few years for all businesses. But for businesses that make more than that, all the way up to 250,000 pound profit, there is gonna be marginal relief. And now that calculation is a bit more complicated, but if you fall in that category, go onto Google and you'll find the formula that you can use. And anyone above 250,000 pound is gonna be paying 25% corporation tax on their profits. And then just finally, before I get to the actual salary, Dividends, these are only payable to shareholders from profits or retained profits from previous years. So always make sure your company is in a position to pay profits when you do this, as the last thing you wanna do is pay yourself dividends that the company can't actually afford, as your accountant will probably have to put those dividends back into the business as a director's loan. And that's a situation you want to try to avoid. Uh, dividends are not subject to national insurance or income tax. They are taxed separately under a dividend tax. They can be paid throughout the year, just like a salary can. So you can pay yourself a monthly dividend or you can pay a quarterly dividend or an annual dividend. It is completely up to you. And dividend tax is paid after you do your self-assessment. So it's not an upfront tax. You pay it once you've done your self-assessment. And there is a tax-free dividend allowance of only £1,000 this year. That's come down from £2,000 last year and it's going down again next year to £500. But for this year, you have £1,000 tax-free dividends allowance. And I've got in brackets there, plus unused personal allowance, which was a lot more important in the past as we used to pay ourselves well below our personal tax allowance, whereas this year it's not gonna be the case. So what would normally happen if you have unused personal allowance, you can actually take them as tax-free dividends instead. So the dividend tax rates for 2023, 2024 are as follows. So your basic rate, which is 13,571 pounds. So basically I've taken your 12,570 personal tax allowance plus your 1,000 pound dividend allowance to give you a starting point of 13,571 pound all the way up to the 50,000 pound threshold. Then it jumps up to 33.75% and then the additional rate at 39.35%. So those are the dividend rates for 2023, 2024. Now, just before I show you my recommended salary, if you're finding this video helpful, I'd appreciate you can scroll down and hit the like button. And of course, if you wanna see more content from me, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. So this is it. This is what you guys have all been waiting for. This is my recommended director salary for 2023, 2024. Now, just very briefly, before I show you the figures, this is what I'm gonna be paying myself. This may not necessarily be the best salary for you if you maybe have other income sources or maybe you get some type of benefit or you have a different situation to me. But if you are a sole director of limited company with no other types of income, this should be probably the best salary for you. But I would always check this with an accountant. Just to reiterate, I am not an accountant and this is not financial advice, but this will be the salary that I pay myself in 2023, 2024. Or should I say the base salary that I pay myself as I will top up the rest with dividends. So here we go. My recommended salary for 2023, 2024 is 12,570 pound per year, which is 1,047 pound 50 pence per month. And anything above this, I will pay myself using dividends and pay dividend tax on those. So the reason I'm gonna pay myself this amount is number one, it uses the full personal allowance. So there's no income tax due on this money. It is above the LEL threshold, so the lower national insurance threshold. So I qualify for benefits with the main one, of course, being the state pension. It is below the national insurance primary threshold, which is when employees start paying national insurance. There's no employee national insurance, but it is above the secondary threshold. So employers and I becomes due from 9,100, which is the secondary threshold, up to 12,570 pound, which is the total amount of salary you're gonna be paying yourself. So I've got there, you've got 3,470 pound, and you're gonna be paying national insurance on that 13.8%. Like I said, when I was going through national insurance, this 9,100 would have usually been the figure I would have recommended in previous years or whatever that threshold would have been in those previous years. And if you don't wanna make your salary complicated, then you may wanna pay yourself again this, this year as you won't have to mess about with NI or making any submissions or payments. However, I would strongly recommend going this route and this is why. So as I put here, however, this is tax deductible from corporation tax at a minimum of 19%. So you might be paying 13.8% 
national insurance on that money, but you're saving a minimum of 19%. And the reason I've put a minimum of 19% is if your profits are under 50,000, you're gonna save 19%. But if it's above 50,000, you're gonna save more than 19%. So when we do the calculations, we're paying 13.8% of the difference between 9,100 and 12,570. So 3,470 pound at 13.8% is 478 pound. That is how much national insurance you're gonna to have to pay. However, if you take the amount of money, so that 3,470 pound, that is now a tax deductible expense. So is a national insurance payment itself. So we take the tax deductible amount, add on the national insurance amount, and then when we apply the 19% saving or the corporation tax deduction, that's gonna save 750 pound, which is a total saving of 272 pound. So it's well worth doing. And like I say, if your corporation tax is above 19%, this overall saving is only going to get bigger. So that is why I recommend this as a salary that you should be paying yourself and doing the necessary paperwork to make the national insurance payments. Now, I've got two final notes before I wrap this video up. Number one, NI payments will need to be made to the HMRC monthly or quarterly. I think you can go for quarterly payments if your overall payments to HMRC are less than £1,500 per month. So I'm probably gonna go down the quarterly payment route. And number two, there is an employment allowance available to limited companies with at least two directors, and this includes husband and wife directors, earning above the NI secondary threshold. So providing at least two of the employees earn above that 9,100, they qualify for the employment allowance, which can be used to offset the national insurance. So potentially, if you claim the employment allowance, then you'd be able to avoid paying national insurance as you've got a 5,000 pound allowance to cover that, but you'd still fully benefit from the corporation tax savings. So you'd save that full 19% without having to have made any national insurance payment. So that is my recommended salary for 2023, 2024. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate you scroll down and hit the like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna know some of the business expenses that you can use as tax deductible, I'm gonna pop up a video in front of me now and I'll see you guys over there.